to the um, to what we call Petra. Has anybody in here seen the Indiana Jones movie, um, The Last Crusade? There's that scene at the end where they go into this temple, and it's this big rock face rock thing. That's actually Petra. Now, what's amusing? Yeah, and what's what's interesting about Petra is when you go through the like when you have the scene where they're going up the steps and they're about to enter into the side of the rock, the mountain, the temple, so to speak. They're walking through the door in the middle, and the room's only like 16 feet in diameter. That's it. It's this. You come right back out. There's nowhere to go. You can't go in and go anywhere. It's one room, if I remember correctly. It's one room, maybe two, but it's like it's just, it's really small. It's like the actual outside of it is ten times larger than the actual inside. Just what you see. It's like it was just like a little shrine is all it was, and there's this huge entrance for a room that's smaller than this church. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they carved it out of the face, rock face for this little tiny room, a quarter the size of this room. It's funny. It really is. It's like, you went through all that for that little thing? It'd be like building this whole church just as the front just to have worship in the sound booth. It's like, why? Yeah, who knows? But in the movie, they make it look like they go into, this, in, into the temple and there's this huge underground temple with these huge caverns and it's like, no, there, there's nothing in there. It's empty. It's just pretty funny. Okay, verse 22. Unless those days had been cut short, no life would have been saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. Now here we're going to go back to Revelation. And we're going to go to one of the angels. In Revelation chapter 8, verse 12, is a direct tie to that, to Matthew 24, 22. And it says, The fourth angel sounded, and a third of the sun, and a third of the moon, and a third of the stars were struck, so that a third of them would be darkened, and the day would not shine for a third of it, and the night in the same way. So, quite plainly, it says one third will be struck, and one third will be struck. What's our daytime hours? 12 hours. 12 hours a day, 12 hours a night. Roughly. Okay? Hmm? Four hours taken off of each day and each night. Reducing each day to 16 hours in length. That is literally what it is. So, when the fourth trumpet is sounded, all they, we go from 24-hour days to 16-hour days. How does God do that? I don't have an answer. He can't make the earth spin faster, I don't think, unless he just... That gives me an idea. Yeah? He's made it stand still in the, in the sky for three days, I think it was. So, I mean... Yeah. It's going to be cut by eight hours. Gone. Revelation 8.12. Yes, sir. Yeah. It's kind of cool. Which means from that point that happens, the rest of the tribulation period is not really three and a half years by 24-hour standards. It's less. Well, because think about it. Right now, three and a half years on 24-hour, how many hours are in three and a half years? There's not going to be that many hours once this happens. From that, from that occurrence to the end of however many, however many there is, there's going to be eight hours minus off of each day. That's a lot of days. But unless those days be cut short, even the elect would not have survived. So, hmm? That's true. Um, I think that was because of the wickedness of man. I mean... God saw fit to destroy the entire world but eight people because of the wickedness of man. They were living for, I mean, imagine if each person lived 700 years, how many kids can you have when you have that kind of longevity? There could have been billions and billions of people on the earth at that time. There is no way to know. Because if it's anything like what I believe it'll be like in the, in the um, millennial kingdom, as far as aging goes, the youthful will, be, will die at the age of 100. 100 years old, but you'll still be considered a youth. I mean, so if you can start, for lack of a better term, breeding at the age of 20, and you can continue to breed for another two, 300 years, I mean, my Lord. I mean, I'm just guessing that's how it was back then. We know they lived a long time, but we don't know what their vitality was. 
that, yeah, they would have known eight, nine generations down. I mean, how many people do you think there were? A lot of people. The oldest was 800 and Methuselah, 883 years old, I think it was. So I'm guessing if everyone lived, probably a minimum. Yeah, buddy. That's a lot of people. And that was, that was in Noah's day. How many people? So if one person can procreate and have 50 males in 200 years, it's a cakewalk. That's nothing. 50, 50, 50 kids in 200 years is easy. You don't have to, you don't have to try. You have to, you, without contraception, you have to try to not have that many kids in 200 years. And that's just plain and simple. And since they didn't have that back then, I'm guessing probably a kid every year or two, unless they just got really good at not, but I don't know. Anyway, we're getting off topic. <laughs> uh, verses uh, 24, uh, verses 23 and 28. Then if anyone says to you, behold, here is the Christ, or there he is, do not believe him, for false Christs and false prophets will arise and will show great signs and wonders, so as to mislead, if possible, even the elect. Behold, I have told you in advance. I'm going to pause there for a moment. It's really kind of awesome, because he shows us events that will happen, will take place in the time frame of the Revelation, even though we don't know where in there it happens. We only know that it will happen sometime during the Great Tribulation. Now we can pretty much say that these these false prophets and false Christs we're going to be they're going to be very very different from any ones we have and we know of now. They are going to have power. They will do signs, wonders, and miracles. If you, for those who are not strong in their faith, they have to endure this. They're going to see somebody raise someone from the dead. Well, who but God can do this? Who but a messenger of God can do this? And it's going to be hard. But I also believe that I think at least most of those who become the elect at this point in time, who truly give their lives to God, will know that he has not come yet. And it's easy to know because here we have the Bible. It tells us it's going to happen. So we need to be... We're, it says, be warned. He literally says that um, I have told you in advance. It's going to happen. So all they got to do is read Matthew 24 at some point in time when they give that to God before it happens. And they go, hey, I was warned. That's going to happen. Because they know what the end, they know what they know what's going to happen. If you read Matthew 24, you know how it ends. It's easy to know what you're seeing is not the Christ. There's only one Christ. And when he shows up, it's going to be spectacular to say the least. Um, continuing. Yeah, so these guys won't come from the east of the sky and the, and the sky won't roll back like a curtain. There will be no sign of Son of Man in the clouds preceding them. There won't be the sign of the Son of Man in the clouds preceding them. The stars will not have fallen from the heavens. I mean, the signs for Christ's second coming are substantial. Every eye will see him. So if you aren't, if, if that has not happened, then what you're seeing is not him. Yeah, if it just happened in your little neck of the woods, it's not him. This, I mean, it's, they should not, even that should not be deceived, especially the elect should not be deceived. Those who have their hearts hardened towards God, I can see them being deceived, you know, but those who profess the faith in God. Elect, that's interesting. Speaking of the elect, mm -hmm. we're in an election season now. Yeah, we are. <laughs> and look at the way politicians, wannabes, obfuscate stuff, change stuff, uh, shade stuff, mm -hmm. make people believe. Obama's second second term, for example. Everybody on the earth saw who he was and what he was. And they elected him anyway because they were. Theoretically. Theoretically. I don't think Obama was actually elected his second term any more than I think Bush was actually elected his second term. I don't think either of them actually won their second terms. I don't think either was actually elected for their second terms. I can't prove that, but I don't think so. I think the Electoral College will do as the Electoral College does. Yes, they can. They don't care who won the 
They can just choose anybody they want. They don't have to vote with the people. And have you ever heard of anybody saying, I want to get a recount for that state to check the electoral college to make sure they voted how the people wanted them to? No. There was a vote recount with that whole uh, George Bush and... Yeah, basically. Correct. But still, I mean, I think it was more for show to reassure the American people, you know. See, we count the votes. Your vote counts. I don't think it actually did. I mean, it was going to be him either way. It wasn't going to change. So. Um, okay, for false Christ and false prophets will arise and show great signs and wonders so as to mislead, if possible, even the elect. Behold, I have told you in advance. So if they say to you, behold, he is in the wilderness, do not go out. Or behold, he is in the inner rooms, do not believe them. For just as the lightning comes from the east and flashes even to the west, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. Wherever the corpse is, there will the vultures gather. But immediately after the tribulation of those days, and here we go. There's another transition word. Immediately after the tribulation is your, tri is your transition. We're done with the tribulation. It's after. It's, it's the same word as then. Then something happens after we're done with the tribulation, and now we're moving after it, and it even says the tribulation there, to kind of remove any real doubt. But immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and stars will fall from heaven, or fall from the sky, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken, and the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky. What is the sign? I don't know. Could be a big cross made out of lightning. That's, that'd be kind of cool to do it that way, but I don't know what it is. It won't be him, but it'll be his sign. The cross has always been a, it's become a universal sign for him. So, I mean, that's my guess. I don't know. Yeah, could be. One never knows. Um, but the sun will go black. The moon will go black. And the stars will fall. Which means when you look up, it will be pitch black. There will be nothing in there. You won't see nothing. All the nice little shiny holes in the curtain right now, they're all going to get stitched up real quick. Except for our world will not be void. And Well, basically, because when Christ comes, Christ will be the light of the world. There will be no longer a need for a son or any heavenly bodies. So more than likely, he was going, he, the only way I can see how it's going to happen is he will uncreate the universe, except for us. As far as I know, Earth and him will be all that remains come the end of the tribulation. So, I, I mean, I can't tell you. We'll find out when we get to that point. Because when he comes back, we'll be with him. Praise God. Um, and the sign of Simon will appear in the sky, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with power and great glory. And he will send forth his angels with a great trumpet, and they will gather together the, his elect from the four winds, um, from one end of the sky to the other. And this is where people say, oh, this is the tribute, this is the rapture right here. This is it. Which, if you stop and think about this for a moment, why would this be it? Yes, he will gather his elect, but this is the tribulation elect. This is not the church. This is not his bride. This is just, huh? They're gone. They're with him already. Why would he wait to the end of the tribulation to gather them up to the clouds where he is? We're going to shoot up there and we're just going to jump in line and we're going to come right back down. We'll never see heaven. And what did Jesus say? For there are many rooms in my father's house. If it was not true, I would have not told you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I'll come back again for you. Why would he go prepare a place and not take us there? Does Jesus seem like, in your mind, the kind of person who likes to waste his time and do things just for the fun of it? I'm going to go make a place. You're never going to see it, but I'm going to go make it. Mm, no, I'm sorry. It's for the se our seven-year visit in heaven. That's... <laughs> No, he has many. He doesn't need a timeshare. He got one for each of us. It's going to be awesome. So, I mean, that's just my mind. That's my line of thinking. Maybe I'm oversimplifying this, but, you know. So here, for our purposes, the elect are scattered across the world. Because 
Is everyone in one place in the world?